I'm Edie Lash. I'm here inside the Hub Culture Studio. It's Davos 2022. Really pleased to be joined by Tom Dunnett, CEO, founder of Street Child. We're in a, I was saying tornado, it's been up to tsunami of crises, right. the war in Ukraine, ongoing concerns about the pandemic still in many parts of the world sure. that aren't vaccinated. Uh, we have worries about food security, rising inflation, energy prices on the rise, crashing stock markets. I don't think we need to go on. In fact, well, the World Economic Forum's economic forecast was either grim or grimmer. We know that women and children are always taking the brunt of, um, of, of crises. You work with some of the most vulnerable people in the world um, and children in the world. Tell me how you see the picture. Yeah, I mean, exactly as, as you're saying, I think the, the worrying thing um, is that we know, that, you know some of this hasn't yet to really kind of ripple through and, and, and down in terms of some of the fallout from the, the, the war in Ukraine. Of course, what has been you know, here for the last couple of years is the, the effect of the pandemic. Um, I was talking to colleagues um, from, from, from Uganda just earlier this morning. Uganda only opened its schools again in January. They were closed yeah. for, for 21 months. Mm. Um, I featured a girl from Uganda in, in my podcast, and the number of kids who have not come back to sure. some schools yeah. are extraordinary. Yeah, um, and, and, and that's, I mean, was, Street Child began its life in Sierra Leone in 2008. We worked just there in Liberia until the Ebola crisis in 2014 15. And then since then, we've, we've worked in humanitarian emergencies around the world now in sort of kind, of, kind of 20 countries, mainly in Sub Saharan Africa, but also Afghanistan and, and Nepal and a couple of other countries in Asia. Um, whenever you put stress on a, on a situation, as you say, women and, and children fall, fall the furthest behind. Um, we're seeing increases in, 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 in child marriage, and we're seeing increases in, in school dropouts. And these are not hard things to prevent. Mm. If, if we were just intentional about it as a global community, and here we are in Davos, um, a sort of epicenter of, of kind of global capitalism and, and global wealth you know, for, for, for this week, um, it would take a a, a, a microscopic amount of additional effort in the grand scheme of things to shore up some of those girls um, who were in school in, let's say, Uganda, mm. um, you know, pre-pandemic, but of, of you know their parents no longer paying their school fees, um, or you know are at the risk of, of um, and in some cases now you know have been been married off or, mm. or whatever. And you know, street child's sort of mission um, is to, as you say, it's to, to stand with those children at the very bottom of the pile. Um, the way we do that is by identifying local organizations mm -hmm. um, and, and, and supporting them. So the, virtually the entirety of Street Child's work, uh, we're like a funnel. You know, I, I get to come to, to, to Davos and move in other circles and, and speak on behalf of, of, of these groups and communities, um, um, which isn't, isn't possible for them. It would kind of be better if it was, but it's not really sort of kind of, kind of practical. But then we push our resources right through to those grassroots organizations as efficiently as possible. And we help them along the way with, yeah, so financing, monitoring, uh, and just some of those things that give, give donors assurance. You know, education is, was invented um, not, not fairly recently. It's been around for a while, and Absolutely. we have the data around also for quite a long time that keeping kids in school it gives them so many more opportunities. Sure. Um, it, it stops them, stops girls from getting married, first of all. Uh, the longer you stay in school, the more you end up earning. Yeah. We know this, and as you say, it's not that hard uh, um, to figure out how to do it, but g give us a sense of, of a challenge that you, you see that you can help overcome. Let's just hang on that, 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 that question. I mean, one of the most mind-blowing facts is that for every year a girl stays in secondary school in sub-Saharan Africa, they increase their lifetime earnings between 10 and 20%. And that's been, that's not just kind of one researcher, that's several researchers who, who, mm -hmm. who, who, who point this out. And it's their lives and the lives of their children uh -huh. and everyone around them. And that's how I conceptualize a lot of um, our, our, the change we make. I mean, street, the, if we boil street gender work down to a single data point, it's like how many children do we help to become functionally numerate and literate mm -hmm. uh, who otherwise wouldn't have been? Now, those children who, who we help, they may go on to be perhaps better farmers than they otherwise would have been, um, or run a better market stall or whatever. They might not, you know, um, hit the professions and, 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 and get to, to come and be in Davos in you know, 10, 20 years' time. But generationally down, it might be, and I think that's, mm. that, that, that's 
And, and that's the, the, the rallying cry here is, you know, you began your, your question with, okay, all these problems are here in the short term, um, but hopefully in a few years' time, you know, they'll have blown through, things will be getting better. But if we just worry about the short-term crises now mm. and we forget about investing in the long term, then we'll still be talking about cycles of illiteracy in, in, in Somalia and in South Sudan and Afghanistan. You know, if I come back in 10, 20 or 30 years' time, it just doesn't have to be that way. We can get children into school in, let's say Sierra Leone, where I've been working for 13 years now, about $50 a year hmm. will get a child into a decent secondary school. They will learn... Um, at that school, they'll come out at the end of the academic year um, with with greater skills. What's that? I mean, it's a cost of a pretty cheap meal and have <laughs> It's a couple of coffees. Yeah, yeah literally that. All right. What is your um, what would you like the people listening to this interview to go and do? What can people do uh, if they care about this issue? They've heard our facts. What's one thing that they can go and do? We've got to be blunt about this. We just need to invest in this. Those who've got access to money themselves. They work for um, corporations. We need to push more money into, into education of the world's most vulnerable children. Let's not talk about innovating or fresh ideas. We have the strategies. We just need the money. Thank you very much, Tom, for that very clear message. And if you would like to donate to Street Child, I'm sure you'd be delighted to receive the funds. We would. We'll channel it right down to all of this and on the ground, doing amazing work and getting children into school and helping them learn more. Tom Dannett. CEO, founder of Street Child. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That's a pleasure. Okay.